Yeah, I think uh, this talk uh, probably supplements the previous talk uh, in a nice way because uh, this uh, uh, Lutonix DCB BTK registry was basically carried out um, uh, in parallel uh, to the uh, enrollment uh, uh, of the randomized trial, which we just heard about. And uh, so this is the study design. It's a prospective multicenter single arm registry, uh, which was basically set up to, demo to demonstrate or to gain additional data on safety and, uh, uh, and efficacy um, of the drug coated balloon uh, in a more real world setting. Uh, in total, 371 uh, patients have been en enrolled at 26 international sites. Uh, patients with rather for three to five were enrolled, um, and uh, well, the uh, they had to have a, of course a significant lesion, and the target vessel had to reconstitute above the ankle. So that's also in line with the, the um, um, requirements in the randomized uh, trial, and uh, the. Uh, Patients were assessed for safety by uh, uh, a composite endpoint, which was freedom from BTK male uh, and um, POD at uh, 30 days, um, and uh, for efficacy as freedom from target lesion revascularization at six months. So these are the study centers. You can see uh, basically um, worldwide uh, distribution, but uh, with uh, uh, most of the centers uh, being in, uh, uh, in, in, in Europe. Um, this is the patient uh, uh, assessment chart, uh, basically follow-up, as you can see, was conducted at 30 days, 6 months, 12 months, and uh, 24 months, and the 24 months data, also the one which I'm going to show you today. These are the patient uh, baseline demographics. Uh, you can see um, probably of uh, interest that the rate of diabetic patients was really very high, as expected for this cohort, with about 64%. And we also see that uh, um, uh, there was about 65% of the patients uh, presenting with a Rutherford 5 stadium um, before the treatment. Uh, here are the lesion characteristics. Um, you can see the target lesion length in the registry was a little bit longer than in the um, IDE study, uh, around uh, 12 uh, centimeters. 68% uh, of the patients with uh, calcification, and uh, yeah. So um, here, uh, this uh, curve shows you the um, primary safety events, uh, pri primary safety endpoint, uh, which was uh, freedom from primary safety uh, events, um, um, and uh, you can see here, uh, and that included all cause death above ankle amputation or major. Uh, re-intervention uh, or bypass grafting. You can see here that uh, out to two years uh, freedom from the safety event was uh, almost 91%. Um, I think uh, supporting a good uh, safety margin uh, of this uh, procedure. If you look specifically here at uh, the individual safety uh, endpoints, uh, you can see that uh, survival in terms of uh, all causes of death was 80%, uh, freedom from major amputation 93.7%, and uh, yeah, you can see here otherwise uh, uh, target vessel revascularizations were needed in 78%. Uh, so, so freedom from target vessel revascularization was uh, 78%. Um, and probably the most important end, uh, end point here again highlighted major amputation-free uh, survival rate uh, was 93.7 percent at uh, two years. Um, this is a uh, uh, slide giving additional insights on the, on the efficacy side as measured by freedom from target lesion revascularization. So you can see that, of course, there were a number of uh, re-interventions uh, necessary. However, at the two-year time point, freedom from target lesion revascularization uh, was 79 uh, percent, and uh, at 12 months it was actually 82.3 percent, so uh, actually beyond the one uh, year time point, only very few additional events were recorded here in the, um, in, in the um, Lutonix uh, registry. Um, the improvement in terms of the Rutherford shift was actually very uh, relevant. Uh, you could see that some uh, patients even improved by five levels, so they were completely asymptomatic. 
uh, at the end of the surveillance uh, period. Uh, however, uh, most of the patients really showed a, uh, at least one or two uh, level improvement. 16% uh, had no change and only two patients had a worsening uh, of symptoms over time. So uh, to summarize, 82% uh, improved by one or more Rutherford categories and 58% improved by three or more Rutherford categories. Um, that's one of the typical cases uh, from the study, uh, typical long occlusion of the posterior tibial artery with a relatively moderate outflow. Uh, reconstitution here above the ankle, that always was an important precondition for the patient to be enrolled in the IDE study or in the registry. And patients were then treated with prolonged balloon inflation. You can see here the, recon the reconstruction result uh, after the procedure. So this is the typical patient uh, which, was, uh, which we see and which we was treated also here in the BTK registry. So. Um, uh, I think we can conclude uh, that uh, we've, uh, so, I mean, the uh, uh, Lutong's BTK registry provides really important data. It's the only uh, larger scale ongoing uh, study uh, beside the IDE trial uh, in, in, in that space. Um, freedom from reintervention for disembolization was 100%, so that's also one important finding that actually disembolization, which was somehow a concern, uh, out of previous study uh, uh, experiences was uh, uh, not relevant here in, in this registry. Freedom from target lesion revascularization at two years, 79%, uh, supporting a good efficacy of the treatment, and uh, overall a very low major amputation rate of only 6.3% um, uh, together uh, with a marked improvement, 58% of patients with more than uh, with three or more uh, Rutherford class uh, improvements. Uh, and also uh, we uh, noticed that there was no difference uh, for diabetic versus non-diabetic patients and freedom from TLR. That's a slide which I hadn't uh, shown here yet, but this uh, was also another finding. Thank you very much.